The next story is about how Grant County was represented in a competition amongst PUDs. Here's a special report from Cody Johnson. The Andrew York Lineman's Rodeo took place over the weekend in Wenatchee. Linemen, if you don't know, are the men and women who maintain and repair power poles and lines that carry electricity to your homes. Lineman rodeos take place all over the country, and the one here in Wenatchee is made possible by the collaborative work of several public utilities, including Chelan County, Grant, Okanagan, Douglas, and Ferry. But teams come from all over to compete, including Portland, Oregon. The linemen competed in a series of events, all of which drawn the skills they use every day, but with a few twists. Each year the events are changed, so teams really don't know what they'll be doing until the morning of the event. This year there were 10 events for each team and included throwing a football and carrying a raw egg up one of the 45-foot power poles. The teams are timed as they run the course, but safety is always the biggest factor in earning a high score. The rodeo was founded 10 years ago after a Chelan County lineman, Andrew York. Andrew was killed by a drunk driver as he is working on the side of the road. Proceeds from the rodeo support the Andrew York Memorial Scholarship, which has awarded over $30,000 in 10 years to Washington State High School seniors active in fighting teen drug and alcohol abuse. Had you already been involved in the drug and alcohol prevention uh, prior to learning about the scholarship? Um, yes, I think that uh, the earliest I can remember really working in the community, specifically targeting um, drug and alcohol use, was in uh, middle school with one of the little clubs that they started. Um, I think it was called Tattoo. And then my mother worked for Together um, for Drug Free Youth uh, for a while. She was their bookkeeper, so that kind of runs. And, um, so it's in the family. Yeah. This is the last year the rodeo will take place to raise money for the scholarship fund. They are still tallying the numbers, but they expect to exceed their goal of 150000 which will keep the scholarship going for many years into the future. Organizers hope that another group will step forward and keep the event going to help fund another charity. For me, I think in 10 years, Andy would never expect anything like this, and I think he would probably be a little bit embarrassed yeah. with all the fuss. It's just... He didn't need a bunch of fuss about him. So this year, 2014, I have 1113 hours and 15 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I work on this thing all year. I do. And yeah, it does make me a little proud that um, people know what it is and know about it. And will miss it, for sure. I wish one of them would raise their hand and say, hey, we're going to continue another one after this. For iFiber One News, this is Cody Johnson reporting. One story from Western Washington is about a terrible crime, but it was popular because of the little hero that saved the day. One, two, three, four. Four-year-old Abby is wise beyond her years. Wednesday was the worst day in my life. On Wednesday, she helped the Whatcom County Sheriff's Office crack a case that would make the Babysitter's Club proud. They told us to get out of the house because they wanted to steal stuff. Investigators say Abby's 17-year-old babysitter orchestrated a false home invasion along with her 16-year-old boyfriend and another male suspect. I think about that was really that was really her being bad. She's not a good babysitter. Investigators say the babysitter made up a story about two armed black men breaking into the Ferndale home. The bad guys stole my kitty bank and they stole my iPod. They also stole my Xbox and my Wii. The babysitter told investigators one of the suspects looked like the neighbor next door. Right over here by this tree and sniper is there. Neighbor Cody Oaks says police uh, handcuffed him and questioned and him for several hours right because he fit the description. Uh, but little Abby knew better and she told police. It wasn't the right skin color. Abby told investigators the suspects had white skin, not black, and that's when the babysitter's story started to crumble and she confessed. Why did you involve the children? Abby's mom says she's proud of her young daughter. Literally in 30 seconds, she changed everything that had been going on for five, six hours. And her neighbor Cody says he hopes that babysitter and her accomplices learn a lesson from all of this. It's kind of sad because I just don't think she realizes, like, 
the dangerous position that it put me in. As for all the stolen belongings... They got it back because of me being a superhero. No word yet on whether Abby plans to go pro with her detective skills. But mostly I would love to be a doctor. That wraps up our weekend edition. iFiber One News will be back on Monday at 5 p.m. with the latest news from around the Columbia Basin. Thank you for watching.